Hey, this is Ed with AtticFoil.com. In this video, I'm going to illustrate the difference between radiant heat transfer and conductive heat transfer and why an airspace is required on one side of the foil in order to even have a radiant barrier. This skillet is over 400 degrees, and if you were to put your hand above the skillet about an inch or so, you would feel the radiant heat coming off the skillet. Now, eventually it gets too hot and you have to pull your hand away. If you put a piece of aluminum foil directly on the skillet, it's only going to feel like it's emitting about 130, 140 degree heat. That's because of the emissivity quality of aluminum foil. If you were to put a piece of foil across the entire skillet, you could hold your hand above it about an inch or so indefinitely because you're barely going to feel any heat coming off the skillet. Now, if you take a piece of attic foil radiant barrier and put it on the skillet, it is going to curl a little bit because it's not designed to handle four or 500 degree temperatures. In a typical attic, it'll never have any issues as far as curling. It's designed to handle, handle temperatures over 200 degrees. Now I'm going to illustrate conductive heat transfer. If you pour a little bit of water on a piece of aluminum foil, it's eventually going to start to bubble or, or to, to boil and cook off. You can see it here in this picture. Now you've got the hot water boiling because there's no airspace. You've got direct contact between the water the aluminum foil and the skillet. However, if you put your hand just a couple inches away and hold it above, you can keep your hand there for as long as you want because of the radiant barrier quality. You have that airspace. Obviously, if you pressed your hand down, it would burn your hand. You can take a piece of attic foil radiant barrier or a sample and do the same thing. Wrap it around your hand and hold it over a skillet and it will keep your hand comfortable for as long as you want. That's because it's reflecting the heat away from your hand. So how does a radiant barrier work in an attic? Well, essentially the roof gets hot, similar to the skillet. It wants to radiate the heat in both directions, but by stapling it to the bottom of the rafters, that radiant heat's going to go across that airspace. It's going to hit the attic foil radiant barrier, be reflected back, and where your hand was, basically is your attic or your insulation, it's not going to get as hot. You can reduce the amount of heat coming into the home. If you can reduce the amount of heat coming into the home, that's less heat that has to be pulled out by your air conditioning system and ultimately, that's how your home is more comfortable and more energy efficient by installing a radiant barrier. 